Hi, I'm Mr. Kilgore, and I'm making a safety video for our miter saw for uh, my class and for Mr. Brown's class. So here we have a miter saw. We've actually got two of them. And uh, the reason they call this a miter saw is because if I was to swing this blade out to 45 degrees and then make a cut like that, that angle is called a miter cut. Uh, you would use that for a picture frame or other things. Um, finished carpentry around the, uh, the baseboard of a house, a lot of things like that, window frames. Um, so that's a miter cut, this is a miter saw. This thing um, falls into different uh, graduated scales, like there it fell into 32 and a half, there's 22 and a half, and it'll also fall into 10 and zero. Most of the time when you come up to it, it will be set at zero. If you just look at this saw, you can see it's kind of made for right-handed people because most people are right-handed. So to activate the saw, you're just going to come up and you're going to grab this and pull it down. When you do that, you can see that the guard moves out of the way automatically. If you ever come up to the saw and this guard does not move, um, then you need to not use it. Uh, sometimes um, that does happen, the mechanism gets stuck, something like that. But for the most part, it should move up and down by itself. Um, got a trigger here. I'm going to hit the saw, turn it on real quick. Okay, so that's the trigger. Notice it breaks automatically. It stops very quickly. It's got an electronic brake in it. It does that uh, to minimize uh, the risk of injury. This is a fence right here. This is just a two by four, but it's lined up with this fence. And this fence goes all the way down to the other miter saw. So that when I bring a, a board up here, I'm gonna lay it against the fence. And then we need to put pressure against the fence. Don't ever try to just use the miter saw like this. Some people are timid and they try to use one hand. Very bad idea because that board can kick out. So you're gonna use your left hand, push it against the fence, and then activate the saw. Right. I like to teach uh, students to keep their thumb in just as a habit. On a lot of tools that you use, keep those thumbs in. Just that's how it is on the miter saw too. Keep that in. If you look, uh, you might not be able to see from there, but if you look close right here on the miter saw, we've got a little red symbol. It's a hand with a red line through it here and here. That basically means the manufacturer says, "Don't get your hands any closer than that." That's about uh, seven inches. So my rule is, don't get any closer than six inches. Okay, so for example, uh, this is a pretty good example. If I'm gonna cut this board right here, that's closer than six inches, and that's kind of tricky. So I really don't want my hand there. A great way to get around that is to put this board here, after I get it lined up, I put that board on top, and then push down on that, and it will hold that board in place perfectly while I cut, and now my hand is six inches away. Okay, so we like that. Uh, I'm gonna, I am gonna cut some wood here in just a second. Um, another thing, this saw is only for ripping. So if you look at this piece of wood here, the grain goes up and down. That's with the grain. Across the grain is this way. So this saw is set up to go across the grain or cross cut or a miter cut. But we don't ever wanna rip with this saw. So this operation right here, that would not be correct. Two reasons why. Number one, your fingers are way too close. Okay, if this board was shorter, my finger would be directly in line with the blade. Um, the other reason is because this base is too narrow. This thing could turn and tilt way too easy. Some people get impatient, like they're waiting for the table saw, it's taking too long. So they'll, they'll kind of cheat the system, they'll try to come over here and rip on the miter saw really bad idea. You just need to wait patiently for that table saw to open up if you're going to rip something. Okay, so this is important. Mr. Brown and I have both talked about this. Uh, our number one rule, keep the blade down, sorry, keep the handle down until the blade stops. So first I'm going to do it incorrectly. So this is wrong. Okay, so that blade is turning as I'm coming up. If in a high production environment, people actually do this. They reach in while that blade is still turning and they've been known to cut their finger. So this is the correct way to do that. Wait for that.
that blade to stop and then clear everything away. I actually had a friend who got a, his finger cut off doing that. He, had, he made two mistakes. One of them was he pinned up the guard because he was, you thought he was wanted to work fast and cut a lot of pieces. He had this guard pinned up out of the way so he could see and he reached in while the blade was still going and he cut the, cut the end of his finger off with the first knuckle, okay? So just wait, again, keep the handle down until the blade stops, all right? It's gonna look like this. I'm pushing here, I wait, and I lift up, okay? Um, I think that's it. Uh, let me look at my list here real quick. Shortest piece of wood you should cut on the miter saw six inches. We're only going to, going to uh, cross cut, operate the miter saw with the right hand, keep the handle down until the blade stops. I We can cut plastic PVC pipe. In my engineering class, we use a lot of PVC pipe, so we do cut it on the miter saw. When you do that, you cut it slow. Sometimes it'll grab the plastic pipe and tear it, uh, but it, if you go slow, it'll do a nice job. Now, obviously in a construction class, you're probably not cutting much PVC pipe, uh, but uh, in my engineering class, we, we do that, and it works good if you go slow. Uh, metal is not going to be cut on a miter saw. Um, don't confuse this with a cut-off saw, which has an abrasive blade on it, okay? Th there's no metal being cut on this saw. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much.